everybody, Nick Dingle here again for another Microsoft Excel tutorial. So this time around, we're going to be looking at functions. Let's have a quick look at this spreadsheet before we talk about it, <clears throat> and then we'll get right into it. So this is a pretty common spreadsheet for me, to be honest, and I'm going to be using it for a number of videos just because there's so many different things that we can do with it. So students do assessments, students get marks, and I need to know a fair few things about that. First of all, I need to know the total marks that they get, I need to know the percentage overall out of 100% that they got, and I usually like to know what rank they came in. I know a lot of people don't like ranks in classes, but I do. All right. I also like to know some data about each of the tasks, Okay, whether the task was really hard, whether it was too easy, different things like that. So if you want to download this spreadsheet and follow along with me, which I probably suggest you do, it's down in the description, click on the first link, that'll take you to this bad boy. So I've added three tasks in this assessment across the top. These numbers indicate the total amount of marks that each student can achieve. So for task one, five marks, eight marks for two, and then 12 marks for the third mark. If I add all those up, I'm gonna get the total marks for the assessment, okay? So you'll notice it doesn't add up to 100%. In fact, it only adds up to 25. So we'll look at that later. I've got four students in my class. Each student is going to have three marks for each task that they complete, okay? And then we're gonna calculate a number of things in these cells here for the total marks that the kids achieve for the assessment, then we're going to calculate the percentage, and then what position they came in the class, okay? And then down here, we're only going to do this for the marks and then potentially the total, okay? We're going to look at the total marks that each task received, the smallest mark, the biggest mark, and then the average mark, okay? And we're going to do that, probably we'll do it across the entirety, but not include the rank, okay? Because it doesn't make sense to calculate the total of the rank. Anyway, so what we first of all should be doing is going through and add marks from B3 down to D6. So I'm actually going to stop the video. I'm going to enter some random marks. None of the marks should go above these numbers, and I'll tell you why in another video in the future. But we're first of all going to do these marks, and then we'll come back, and we'll do some functions and formulas. Okay, so I'll see you very soon, people. All right, we're back. So I've actually left one of the students blank because I want to show you something nice and quick that I like to do in my spreadsheets, okay? So what I've done, let's just say, actually I'm going to delete John's data and I'm going to quickly re-add it. So what I would do is I would press five and then hit the tab key on the keyboard. I hit zero, hit the tab, I type in 12, and then when I hit enter, watch the position of the cursor. It actually goes to the first task of Blade where I first press the tab key. So this is a quick way that you can add in rows of data and move down and move on. So if I just quickly go one, tab, one, tab, two, enter, it goes down to the next row. Okay, so I've got my values in here, okay, and it's about time that we start adding in some formulas to calculate all these things. So let's do this bottom stuff here first before we do the top stuff, okay? Only because I prefer to do this stuff down here because it's going to use a lot more of what I want to do in this video. So if we want to create a formula for the total, we're going to add up the 4, the 2, the 5, and the 1. All right? Don't include this top 5. So if I press equals, and I click on the top one, plus the next one, plus the next one, plus the next one, hit enter, I've got the total there. And if any of these marks change for whatever reason, obviously this total is going to update as well. So one thing to note, this is actually a really bad way. Imagine if I had... 28 kids or 30 kids in a class. Could you imagine adding 30 cell references up there? The first one plus the second one plus the third one plus the fourth one plus the fifth one. It's long enough to just like talk about it rather than write it. So this is when functions come in. Now functions are absolutely wonderful. What they are, they're just simply a keyword that you use and then you can pass cell references or a cell range to that keyword and then Excel does all the work for you. It is absolutely amazing. If you want to look at all of these functions, okay, you can actually click this button here. But let me talk about the difference between a formula and a function. So let's actually use one before we do. I should probably do that. So I'm going to hit equals again. And we're actually going to type in sum, S-U-M. Okay, and see all these drop downs? These are all different functions that you can use. I'm only going to do sum, okay? And I'm going to actually open up a bracket, so shift nine, and it's going to ask us for numbers. So the easiest way to add the numbers is just to add a cell range. Don't add them individually, because again, we get the problem. If we have 30 kids in the class, we're going to have to add all 30 individually. So if I just click and highlight, 
And there we go. There's our first example of a cell range reference. Okay. So what this means is B3 is the beginning cell. Colon means, you know, there's heaps of them in between. And then B6 is the final cell. So from B3 down to B6. And cell ranges can also be across, just like that. So you'll see it goes from B3 down and across to D6. However, I don't want to do that. I'm just going to do that. Close the bracket with Shift 0. And if I hit Enter, bingo. It's beautiful. Now, I actually got this error thing like I talked about in the last video. It says there's an additional number adjacent to it. It's actually talking about this 5. I don't want to include the 5 in the sum. I'm going to tell Excel he's an idiot and just ignore it. So I can click here, ignore error. Okay. Now, I could actually fill that function across to the right, and it's actually going to move the cell references to the C column and then the D column when I do it. So, eh, eh, and there you go. Okay. So you might notice that the error suggestions have come back for these guys as well. You can actually highlight a couple of cells at a time and ignore both of them at the same time. Now, there's a cool shortcut on the keyboard I use for my fills. Okay. So if I want to fill to the right, okay, I'm just going to highlight the cells. Notice there's only one cell that's got content in it. If I press Control R, it fills it across to the right. Okay. And you can also fill it down in the same manner. So if I highlight down, I can Control D to fill it down. Okay. Obviously, I don't want to do that, but that's just a quick example of what we can do. So I'm going to quickly ignore the errors and we're good to go. Okay. So the difference between a formula and a function. So this whole thing is a formula, okay? What a formula tells Excel is that I'm about to do a calculation of some sort, okay? There is something I want to do here to calculate. That's all a formula is. A function, however, is this keyword that allows us to do some number crunching on a set of data. So a function has a particular purpose. So in this case, the sum function will sum up numbers. It's as simple as that. And if you want a better description of that, Okay, you can actually click, I should probably do that a bit slower, click on FX, okay, and then you can go help on this function, and hopefully it hurries up, I'm actually uploading a video as we talk, so it's going to be a little bit slow, unfortunately, and it's going to give us a better description of the sum function, some of the options that you can use with it, okay, and hopefully it loads, if it doesn't, I'm just going to close it. And here we go. The sum function, one math and trig functions, add all of its arguments. That's all you really need to know. Okay, adds all of its arguments. Arguments are things that you put inside the brackets. That's all it is. Okay, so as you can see, we can use it a couple of different ways. We can either use it with a2, comma, a3, comma, and then the next one. Okay, or you can add in heaps of stuff. So there's more examples down the bottom here. So this one here. It's got the cell range. It's got a 15 after it, okay? It's just a, he's actually just using the number 15, okay? Anyway, let's close that and close that. Now, if I want to actually have a look, you can click on this FX button and you can see all the common functions that you can use inside Excel, okay? So as you can see, some of them here we're actually going to use straight away. Now, you can't see min anywhere. You can see max, but you can't see min, all right? If I actually type in min and click go, that's going to find it for me. And if I click OK, it's going to bring up this other dialog. So this is another way that you can enter functions. Okay, It's asking what data do you actually want to perform this function on. Okay, So I'm going to click on this little button, which is basically to minimize the dialog and let me highlight the cells that I want to use. All right? So it's actually suggesting B2 to B8. And as you can see, B2 is up here and B8 is down here. I don't want to do all those numbers. I just want to do B3 to B6. So I'm going to click on that, highlight that, and click on that button again, and it rolls back. All right, so now all we have to do is click the OK button, and we're pretty good. So again, we get an error because we're omitting that top number. To be honest, if you don't like these errors, you could probably just delete these numbers. And you're not going to get any more errors. Okay. Another option is we can insert a blank row. And again, because it's not adjacent, because it's not next to the numbers we're adding, it's going to ignore that error. I might just do that for my particular situation, to be honest. All right. So the next one, I'm a big fan of just typing equals, typing the name of the function. If you know it, this one is going to be max, very similar to min. Then all you have to do is open a bracket, 
highlight your cells and hit the enter key. You don't even actually have to type in the right hand bracket because Excel is going to have a guess of what you want to type in. So I'm going to highlight these cells, hit enter, and it's done it for me. So it's found the highest value out of these cells here. All right. Then the average is the same thing again. I'm going to hit equals, type in average, full word, open up a bracket, highlight, enter. And that's going to literally calculate the average of the numbers that are up here. So we don't even have to add up all the cells and then divide it by four, which is how we would really calculate it manually. I am just going to use average and the cells. And then that function will add them up and divide it for me. And that's the beauty of all this. Okay, now I'm actually going to use the fill thing again. So I'm going to highlight these three cells and I'm going to fill across the page. So bang, bang. How easy is that? Okay, it's telling me the lowest mark is zero for these two tasks and the highest mark was seven and 12. All right, and then the average are these marks here. Okay, how good is that? So give it at that everybody and then in the next video we're going to deal with the rest of the spreadsheet plus a few little nice neat tricks so thank you very much for watching everybody and i'll catch you in the next video bye